Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Boxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be looking at how to do a BIOS update using a USB stick on our ASRock B450M Pro 4. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at how to do a BIOS update for our ASRock B450M Pro 4. The M is very important, this is the micro ATX version, not the full size ATX version. So if you're watching this video and you have the full size ATX version, this isn't going to work for you. You do have to have the specific BIOS for your motherboard. If you want to see how that is done, you can check out one of the videos up here or in the video description if you have that particular board. So this is a little bit different. We're going to get this board ready. Currently, it's actually on BIOS version 4.2, which actually supports Ryzen 3000 series processors, which is currently running a Ryzen 5 3600. But we've actually just gone and bought a Ryzen 5500 for a relatively good price. So I wanted to get the BIOS ready for it. Now, oddly, that processor actually isn't supported. At least it appears it isn't. So I'm just going to go with a 5000 series BIOS and uh, fingers crossed it's going to be A-OK. -okay. If it is a problem, we can always put our old processor back in and... Uh, Take another look at it another time. Anyway, I've waffled on way too long. Let's get on with this. So obviously you need your PC in working condition because uh, you do need to flash the BIOS from actually, well, in the BIOS. There is a built-in utility to enable that, but you will need a USB drive, which you can format and erase all the data off. And it has to be formatted in the FAT32 file system. So once you've got those things ready, let's head over to the PC and we'll show you how to do it. Okay, so first of all, we're going to put our USB stick into the computer. Always use the ports on the rear of the PC, if at all possible, if you can actually reach them. And as you can probably hear by the change in the tone of my voice, I'm reaching around to the back of the PC. So let's stick in a USB stick there. And there we go, it's found a USB drive. So let's go ahead now and we're going to actually format that drive. Let's just see what's on it. So go into Windows. USB drive C, so it says it's empty anyway, that's fine. And we'll just do a quick format to make sure it's okay. So FAT32, yeah. Um, any drive over 32 gigs, you won't be able to use this FAT32 unless you repartition it. So do bear that in mind. Uh, allocation unit size, just go with the default. And if there is a volume label there, get rid of that. You don't need to have that. So click on start. Make sure the drive is actually okay to erase and click okay. And there we go, format is complete. So the next thing to do, we've got our drive ready. So we need to get the BIOS file now. So if we go over to Google or your search engine of choice, just type in the top there, B450M Pro 4, or alternatively, there will be links in the video description, which you can click on conveniently. So we'll go to the asrock.com site. Do a quick visual check, make sure that the board that you're looking at is the board you've actually got in your PC, which yes, I'm happy that is the one. Now, you'd be tempted to click on support at the top here, but don't click on support up there. Scroll down a little bit and you want this one down here. So this is where you've got your motherboard overview, specifications, support, where to buy, etc. So hit support. Then we've got options. So you've got download, BIOS manual, etc. etc. It might be worth nipping in very quickly into your CPU support list, in which case you can scan down through here, find your processor, and see which of the BIOSes is actually validated for that particular processor. Like I said, I'm using the Ryzen 5 5500, which actually is quite a new one. It doesn't appear to be listed on here. I have had a quick scan through. It doesn't appear to be anywhere. Uh, maybe I'm not seeing it here, but it doesn't seem to be listed. So we're going to go with one of the BIOSes, which actually support one of the 5000 series. So any one of these. So that is going to be kind of anywhere from version 4.6 upwards. Uh, we're on version 4.2. So we are going to need to upgrade a little bit. If we go up to the top again and choose BIOS, this is all the BIOS revisions available. So 5.30 is the latest one available, uh, which is from the 13th of the 10th, which actually predates when the 5500 was launched because it was launched relatively recently. So that is the basically the latest one we can do. Sometimes it's worth reading these sections here. ASRock do not recommend updating this BIOS if you're going to use a Pinnacle, Raven or Summit Ridge CPU on your system. So as you do bear that in mind, if your existing processor is one of those, then again, that could be potentially problematic. But generally, I have found, even though they have these warnings on there, generally I've ignored them. You shouldn't ignore them. You should take heed of what they say. But yeah, anyway, I'm just highlighting what it says. 
So what we want to do is to go to the download section so you can choose to get it from the global location or the Chinese location. The choice is entirely up to you. I'm going to go with global. And it says here, please read the instructions, blah, 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 blah. Obviously, yeah, if you do this wrong or something goes wrong or your boss is not compatible, potentially you could brick your motherboard. So just be aware. Once you're happy, click OK. And it will start downloading as a zipped file. So what we're going to do is click on there, go to show in folder. And it's gone to our default location, which is our downloads folder. And there you can see there is our ROM file. Now, currently as it stands, it is a compressed zipped folder. So we're going to want to right click on there. We're going to choose extract all. And we're going to extract it to the same location. So just leave the defaults there. Click on extract. And there is our BIOS file. So you should find your BIOS file is going to be somewhere in the region of about 16 megabytes or 16,000 kilobytes. If it's smaller than that, then you haven't unzipped the file correctly. So what we're going to do is, well, you can choose to do it either way. You can either drag and drop into the D drive or you can do it the old fashioned way. Right click, choose cut, go to the USB drive, right click and choose paste. That is the old school way of doing it. So now we can close down the computer. So choose restart. And whilst the system is in the process of rebooting, you want to be tapping either the delete key or the F2 key. Either one works. Obviously, if you've got a keyboard that doesn't have a delete key or for some reason, or the function keys don't work or need to be toggled, you can just use either. So F2 or delete. So I'm just tapping those now. So from the main bars, you just go across and go into tools or tool. And you can go into instant flash. And already it's picked up the drive and it's given the option to update. So we're going to click on update and gives you another warning. Do you want to update the EUFI to B45 blah, 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 5.3? Uh, yes, we do. So just click yes. And now it's going to start flashing. So this is all done within this window and this will take a little while. So we'll fast forward to the end. Okay, so when that is done, it will come up with saying programming success, which is obviously a good thing. Press enter to reboot system. Now at this point, I've never seen it say anything else other than that. So if you're getting some other message, then uh, do let me know if you've ever seen it. I'll be interested to see what the actual error message could potentially be. Anyway, so we're gonna click on OK. And I would suggest when it does it, it's gonna probably try and retrain your RAM, that sort of stuff. So just keep on tapping the delete key and go back into the BIOS. And we'll just make a quick double check that the settings that we had previously are saved and just general things like XMP has been enabled. Okay, so we're back into our BIOS now, and as you can see, it says the B450M Pro 4 for BIOS version P5.30, still recognizing our processor. Our RAM's defaulted back to the original settings, so at this point you'd want to go in and change things like your XMPs and all that kind of thing. So at the moment it's set to auto or XMP, so we can load our XMP profiles, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, make sure that all that is done. Things like your boot options, make sure they're all okay. But yeah, that is uh, going to be pretty much it. So when you're happy, you can click on Save Changes and Exit, and then you should find yourself going back into Windows. Okay, so there you go. There is the uh, the BIOS flash updated and ready and waiting. So as soon as our processor wings its way back from uh, where it currently is residing, then we can try it in the systems and actually see what it's like, see if there is much of a difference between the 3600 and the 5500. I'm guessing probably not, but anyway, we will find out soon enough. So anyway, hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, smash the like button if you want to see more content on a regular basis. Maybe hit the subscribe button and the chime icon and you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.